my name is Danielle Free, and I've just been around this stuff all my life. Everybody knows me as TC. I build street rods, hot rods, have for years. Together, we pull our projects from the weeds, find them in chicken houses and junkyards with a purpose to rebuild and revive treasures people have thrown out as trash and forgotten. Creativity meets ingenuity. Scavenger hunt meets build show. This is Full Metal Rehab. This is our first project. It's our 1960 Chevy Apache, which is also going to be my parts truck and a go-getter and something that is going to be good on the street and suspension under it's solid. So I'm going to have a good ride while I'm riding around scavenging, seeing what I can find laying out on the side of the road that I can bring back to the shop and I'm going to make it into something new. Okay, foul on me. This thing is a little bit rustier than TC probably would have wanted it to be. As you can see, I've got it flipped up, and I'm not going to admit this very often, but you were totally right on the fact that this thing is past rotten. So I went ahead and got a hold of AMD and got all new stuff taken care of for us. It is pretty rotten. It's bad. It's bad. So you've ordered all the stuff and from them, and mm -hmm. well, don't you think we have enough to do with the chassis and suspension? How are we going to get this done, too? We have more than enough to Yeah, do. more than enough. I think we need to call in a friend of mine. He does this, uh, Steve, and uh, he owes me a little bit, so we can probably get him over here. And while he's doing this, we can finish up the chassis, and then once everything, the cab's done, the chassis's done, we can mate it all back together, and uh, it'll just help the project along a lot faster. So I'll give Steve a call and uh, we'll get him over here and get started on this because mm -hmm. he's got a lot, a lot to, of work do. to do. A yeah. lot of work to do. You better not tell him how bad pretty... condition it's in when you nah. call in that favor. But we got all the new parts, so that's good. And we'll get all the stuff cut out mm -hmm. and the new stuff in. All right. Great. It'll work. Uh, my name is Steve Bannister and uh, I like playing with hot rods and working on metal. And so been over here helping TC out a little bit and, and uh, trying to just have a little bit of fun. Well, when we first started on it, it was pretty rough, you know, the rocker panels were eat up. Really the structure and integrity of the truck was something to be desired and to make it where it was safe to put back on the highway, we needed to get rid of the rust and the, and the deterioration that we had. So we went to Auto Metal Direct and got floorboard extensions and new rocker panels and uh, cut the old ones out and replaced them with brand new ones. So we're back structure wise, ready to go again and, and uh, everything's looking good. If that truck had ever got hit in the side, in the doors or something, there would have been no structure to keep the ever what hits you from coming in on you on the cab. Plus the fact that, uh, you know, you might have been experiencing cracked windshields or, or back glasses from the cow moving around because the floorboard was so weak in it. Uh, by putting the new rockers in it, it all stiffens everything back up and, and makes it where it's solid again, just like it was the day it was new. All right, well, of course, we're going to set the cab down, but before we do, mm -hmm. you know, the more we can do on the chassis, the cab's out of the way, you know, we can walk Better. up to it, get to it. It's a lot easier on us. Okay. So, so before we get the cab mounted down, but we're ready. We're ready to mount it down. Um, we're going to get these trailing arms in place. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're, we're just going to mock it up, basically, close. So that's our next step. Hi, Juan. I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think so either. Well, it'll work, but it'll just be the whole time. It'll be make it. It won't stop. See, it works great, and it'll get in there with what we gotta have here. But this is only half inch when I have. And it, all right, we gotta regroup. That's not going to work. <laughs> what we're trying to figure out is where to locate our spring purchase. And we, once we put our U-bolts in place, then that kind of, but we'll measure off the end since mm -hmm. this housing is really close to, to the old one. We can measure off it and put us a mark off the end. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing. But now we got the damn chassis so close in the rear end, so how? <laughs> So this just gives us uh, something to go by. Kind of a guideline. 
and from there we'll start bolting it up. Okay. All right. I'm ready. A little bit clearer. So we're, we're going to use new housing purchase, you know. Okay. Because the old ones, that you, it's just, they're not it's worth cutting easier. off and trying to save, okay? So we've got brand new ones. We're going to locate this same location or real close. That's why our measurement mm -hmm. for. I think he's making it sound really complicated and it might not be. And then we'll, we'll mock it up and just tighten the U-bolts down. Mm -hmm. the big U-bolts goes right over here and tightens it up. And then eventually this gets welded. Okay. After we set our pinion nail, we get everything centered up, then this will be a final. But we'll take real critical measurements to get that. A little close to my face. Almost done. <laughs> You're coming uh, off my walk, mark. We walked off. You slacker. All right, let's see here. You just wanted <laughs> another break. Low air. No, no air almost. It was down to, I forgot. Well, you know, you guys come in here this morning and opened up. You didn't turn the air on. When I open up, I always turn the air on. You were, we were so breakfast. it's your fault. <laughs> A little bit more than you there. You do that so well. Good deal. You're there. Great. A lot of bang. Right. Stuff don't match up. Nothing fits. The drive shaft's not going to work. The drive shaft's not going to go through the chassis. You can't get it through the hole. Without it hitting. You know, I was thinking, well, you know, the right width, which you've got to have a housing really close to the right width for it to work, without a doubt. But then I didn't realize that pinion was so offset, and then we're stuck with our chassis because you can't change it. And it's got a tunnel for your drive shaft to go through. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, man. Why didn't I see that? I thought you were perfect. That was your job. You should have told me that. See, I can't see it all. So now what do they got to do? So now we'll have to cut the rear end housing, center the pinion over, and still with it being way over to the right, we got to move it over to center, and then it'll work. But until we do that, it's not going to work. Tell me on this. I don't know. What You're I'm just doing. gonna sit here and tell me how shit ain't gonna line up. I'm lost. You need to tell me. <laughs> TC is like a, I think, more bitchy of a woman than I am sometimes. And you know, usually when you put women together, it never really works. But you know, we're we're working good. We bicker and bitch, and I don't know. He's kind of like my dad, I guess. I can just yell at him and bitch at him and laugh at him because that's all he does. That's good. All right, TC, so tell me what you're doing. Well, we're going to set the cab. We have our new cab mounts. And it's going to slide right into place? No, it's not going to slide right in place. We'd like for that to happen, but not. But we've put our new rockers on and our floor extensions. We've got all that welded in, good and strong. And now it'll support the weight of the cab. So we got our new mount, but now we got to lower it down mm -hmm. and get a little bit closer and actually start putting our mounts in and... Hopefully it won't fight us too bad. Okay. So what? I guess you get around there on the <coughs> hoist, and I'll try to start lining the front ones up. Maybe we'll get the front ones in first. I'm supervising TC trying to level out the chassis right now. And he's not doing a very good job, <laughs> I might add. 
I should have a, you know, five, six foot level doing this, you know? What? Can yeah, you hold just it. Like, lay it this way and then set No, because it's, see, that's, that's where, but don't put it on, see, you can't have it on a well or a, you know, hump, then you're not getting a true reading. So you got to have it good and flat and on a straight area. And now we're too high. Some bitch. Hey, I didn't say it was easy to do. I'm fine. TC's bitching oh, today. She says I'm bitchy today. He put on all well, hell, I got good reason to be. Come on. <laughs> Damn. They're trying to put me in jail. <laughs> I don't think you're going to go to jail. We'll come bail you out. TC's wound up about something every day, so it makes it a little difficult to get things done between him looking for his tape measure and answering the phone and bitching about stuff. What the bubble tell us? The bubble tells me that you're perfect. Oh, I love it when I'm perfect. You sure? <laughs> you want to look? You really sure? No, you, you, if I'm perfect, I like hearing it from you. You're so perfect. All right, you're great. perfect. We're good. We're good then. All right, so this morning we got the motor back from my dad. My dad is still working on the motor that we are actually going to throw in the Apache, so he sent over a dummy motor just so we can mock things up. And can get it in. Did you eat your Wheaties for breakfast? Ugh, it's not like we got a whole motor and transmission. Ugh, we got to get over the hump. There we go. Well, the day we went over there to check it out, Dad had my car out, which was pretty fabulous. What the hell are you doing? Well, I thought maybe. We'd see if we could fire this thing up. If you know somebody that might want to drive it again. Sounds like a great Sometime. idea. Sometime. Yeah. And then after that, we'll dig with that motor to TC's. I ain't worried about that motor when you got this out here. Get up in that thing and see if you know how to get in it anymore. <laughs> you know, it's been a long time. I'm a few years older. Nah, come on. Got it? Got it. Remember how to do things? We were able to fire up the car, get it running, listen to it, which then kind of took a little bit of my mental focus off of messing with this motor, which is what I was actually over there supposed to be doing. Dad. What? What is going on with those headers? There's nothing wrong with it. We'll have TC cut a couple holes in the hood. It's a rat rod, it'd be perfect. I like that, but that just sounds like more work for him. I don't think he's gonna go for it. I'll try that. My end of my wire come off. He had it on the stand, we fired it up, listened to it. Sounded good then. Looked terrible then, but it was running. Can we gotta block it up from here. So uh, I gotta get some wooden blocks and we'll kinda block it up and check our level. Mm -hmm. Maybe can even get it off the cherry picker. 11 to center, we're 12, we need to come this way a little bit. Not much, I'm gonna ease it down, okay? Okay. Oh, uh, we're close. All right, let me, I gotta get something to block the transmission up now, okay? okay. Our next step is? Motor mounts. Bolt our motor mounts to our block. Hopefully I give you the right bolts. You probably gave me the wrong ones on purpose. Don't cross through them. What if I want to? Make sure it's still sitting good on the, not rocking. So is it bubble pretty close or? Cause I can't see that this, um, bubble's a little too far your way. So we went too high with it? Yeah. You sure? The well, bubble don't lie. <laughs> and I hate being picky, but you got to be on certain things. Oh yeah, that's way better. I like it. Alright, that's picky enough. Right there. So don't touch anything? <laughs> don't touch anything, like I did. <laughs>
All right, so basically what I'm doing right now is using this crazy lacquer thinner that is eating my fingertips off and about 20 pairs of gloves because we want to get all the rust particles kind of off the bed so when we do spray over the rust, it's more of a clear surface that the paint will adhere to. So right now what is going on with my shop truck is we have been out here messing with the body all day. Um, Eastwood has been completely awesome and stepped up to the plate and given us the materials to do the bed liner, which we sprayed in and sprayed the floor pan in the truck. And then we have been using their rat rod flat clear for the body and everything. And it is going on great. It looks rusty, but it's still smooth to the touch. So it's really awesome stuff. Progress wise, we're doing good, I think. I mean, maybe a little slower than we should be moving, but you know, there's only a few of us in here helping. So we're doing what we can when we can. All right, so now that you're done screwing around on the phone, Mm -hmm. Can I get your undivided attention over here so we can get this all taken care of now that we have it fixed where um, you managed to measure shit wrong? Yeah, I know it was my mess up, but you know, uh, we, we got the rear end, so the pinion's centered, so we've got such a small hole for our drive shaft to go through, it has to be centered. So now we'll mock it back up the way we were, and when we realized we had that problem, and hopefully it'll be good and centered up and then we can just keep going with it. All right? Yeah, let's do it. All right, well, you grab the other end of that and I'll grab this end and we're gonna set it right into the saddle. What does that look like to you? Hold it up. looks like the tape measure is facing you so I can't read it. We're 16th off. That's close enough for now. We'll have to do a final, but that's close enough for now. All right, so now we can tighten up our U-bolt. What's that? That's good right there. We got it cleaned. Got our gasket surface clean. And I don't like to put silicone and stuff on, so you clean the surface is good. The gasket should take care of the rest. <laughs> Heavy chunk. Then we bolt her down. We're good to go. The axles we had for this rear end, they totally wouldn't work. So we had to order new axles, but we had to have new bearings anyway. So we ordered new axles and we hope we ordered them right and we'll slide them in and see if we ordered them right. <laughs> if. We'll put three inch wooden blocks and that'll represent ride height and then we can jack up underneath the housing and put our jack stands there and then measure for I draw shaft. The only thing we still got a truck jacked up for, I got to get under it one more time and measure for our drive shaft length. So then we finally can make this thing a roller, believe it or not. We can put wheels on it and we can put it off these jack stands and it can push it around because it's going to be on wheels and tires finally. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't you, uh, we got some old wheels out there. So why don't you go out there and make sure they got air in them and we'll get four wheels and tires on this thing and I'll measure the drive shaft and then we can let it down and we actually have a roller. We can push it around. And then we can push it around. Uh, All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we got our pinion angle set and our rear end's real close to center, then we'll do a final absolute center with our panter bar because it's adjustable. Right. So what's next? on our truck here. What's next? Our bed. And you need to work on the bed out there and get the wood squared away because we're going to, after we get that done, we'll have to set the bed on the chassis. So, uh, so you're going to acknowledge that I'm being boss right now when so it comes while, to the bed? <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to weld this up. I got to, you know, do a few little measurements, set this up, weld it. And while I do that, you can be I'll go out there and work on that. The bed. And I'll show you what we are going to do. We.
So what we, we went and actually stripped this wood off a dilapidated, falling down house. We thought that with it being aged and weathered, it would be a perfect candidate for us to plane, get a flat surface so we can throw it in the bed of the truck and it, instead of putting new wood in and trying to distress it and make it look old, we just went and got some old wood. Well, we planed the boards for the bed, and apparently now we have to plane more, be more boards for the bed. We weren't gonna use the strips. Now we're gonna use the strips. Now we're at this controversy about black bolts and chrome bo bolts, and I don't know what we're doing with the bed. I don't think we know what we're doing with the bed yet, but we'll figure it out when we do it. And this is like 10 times worse than a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> and it sucked. But we got it grooved on the other side and got strips, all the strips the on. Strips, all right, cool. Got all the cross members back on. We got some long bolts sticking through. We'll take care of those, but uh, it looks good. Let's walk around and look at the other side then. Okay. The other side's beautiful. Prepare yourself. All right. Just saying. This, this is what matters because this is, a, this is the, Voila. Work, the work inside here. What do you think? Looks good, looks real good. It's not quite finished, but it looks real good. <laughs> so we're gonna set it on the truck and see if it uh, actually works or what? Are we? Yeah, let's try that. Let's set it down on the chassis and see if uh, our Make works. Make sure it's not gonna, Caddy Wampus. It's gonna pan out for us. Think. All right, well, we got the wood in the bed, and we had to have it turned up so we can get to all that. So, got the wood all down. It looks real good. It's good and strong. All bolted down. Got two little strips to do in the back. Got to get one more, and then it's complete. We set the bed on the chassis. We still got to put the pads under it, bolt it down. It's not bolted down, but we'll line it up. Okay. But it looks real good, and um, we got all the suspension done underneath the rear for sure. And so, what's next? The rear bumper. Rear bumper. So we can put a rear bumper on, then we can figure out a gas tank, because we might do a fold down tag bracket for our gas tank. So we'll fold the tag down and fill it, if it'll work like that, we're gonna try. But we won't know that till we get till the bumper. Till we gotcha. the bumper on, and maybe tuck it in a little bit, shorten it up so it looks better. And then we'll mount the gas tank, mm -hmm. which we have, and see if we can't Put the filler behind the gas behind the tag so this is a good stopping point don't you think so you don't want to screw all that today no i'm ready to stop and go have a beer